So I was very excited that we were able to pull this panel together. Um, we've been talking all week about uh, all the big users out there and some of the different industries they're in or uh, sort of scientific computing or big businesses. And now we're really looking at the diversity of OpenStack deployments geographically and hearing from some of the leaders who are out there uh, building and deploying OpenStack clouds all over the world. So that's what we want to talk about today. I'm Mark Collier and with the OpenStack Foundation. And we're going to give everyone a quick chance to introduce themselves and tell us where they're from and what their company is, uh, is working on. And then we'll go through a few questions. Uh, I think this is oh, yeah. Well, my name is Mauricio Rojas. I'm working in Mexico. I'm Chilean, by the way, but um, but here uh, the company that I'm working today they 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 take me from Chile uh, to start working as a CTO. Um, well, what is doing Kio? Kio is a 100% Mexican company. Um, we have 14 data centers in around Latin America. In Mexico, Central America, we're starting with a couple of data centers in South America. Um, we are a company of 1,500 people. It's, it's very big. Um, um, and today we, uh, we have a lot of uh, cloud services for enterprise. Enterprise is our main target today. Um, what we have there, uh, we are working with government, financial, mostly of the company are in this industry. Um, that's all right now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Mariano Cugnetti. I'm the CTO at Enter. Enter is uh, an ISP based in Milan, Italy. Uh, so we, as an ISP, we do mainly two things, uh, which are hosting and connectivity. Uh, we sell uh, fiber, copper, uh, XDSL, uh, lines, uh, MPLS networks uh, across Europe and the world. And uh, we also uh, provide um, enterprise services uh, based on virtualization or physical hosting or housing, traditional services. Uh, we developed uh, a cloud on uh, OpenStack to provide uh, VPS services. Uh, the name of this service is uh, CloudUp, cloudup.it and also uh, another service named subserver.it, which is the same as the cloud app, but with the pre-configured packages, uh, software pre-installed on top of it. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Brian Aker. Um, I'm at Hewlett Packard. Um, my title is like fellow, and there's a bunch of other stuff at the end of it. But essentially, uh, I own uh, managed and platform services components uh, that run on top of uh, HP Cloud, which is entirely, well, not entirely, mostly, uh, all of OpenStack. So we actually have Nova and Glance and all that being publicly available. Uh, I'm Natsu Ueno from NTT Japan. Uh, I'm mainly working for the, the development side, so sorry, I'm not marketing guy. <laughs> so that. Okay, I, I can translate it into marketing speak. If yeah. You <laughs> So we are working for the OpenStack from very early stage and uh, sending the tons of patches to the communities. Uh, I'm mainly working for the Quantum, and um, I'm one of the core developer of the Quantum now. Uh, so basically, we are preparing some OpenStack cluster now. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Well, I thought it would be interesting to hear a little bit about uh, the conditions in your local markets that you serve um, in terms of you know what the state of, of interest is in cloud and how much adoption there is and and you know what what is it about your market that uh, might be a, a little bit unique in terms of you know openstack interest or cloud in general adoption well in Latin America the the, the cloud services market is not double digit, uh, digit yet in, 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 in share of the, of the global services. But uh, we have, today we can say we have roughly the $300 million uh, as a cloud services market. Um, but uh, we have, a, the, I think, the highest uh, growth rate, in, if you see the, the, the rest of the continent or the, or the countries. Um, whereas uh, there is a very high in, in 
we we are not prepared if we, we think about the, the companies of the user in order to work with automation orchestration or these kind of tools to, uh, today. The, the, the customer thinks that a bunch of virtual machines is a cloud and it's difficult to explain them that uh, we need to go to, to, to have better control of the, of the virtual machines or to, to try to provision uh, faster. Uh, the, the, the main challenge is to, to teach them uh, about this. Uh, Kio is, 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 is working really hard to, to educate the, the, the future user, uh, users, our customers, about this uh, with different seminars and training in, in different countries of, of Latin America. But uh, this is the hard part. The other thing is the public cloud is more related to SMB. It's, it's, it's not so enterprise today or, or mid-market. We are working hard to do that. But uh, the mid-market and the enterprise is just uh, putting focus on private cloud. They, they want the, their own dedicated infrastructure to do that. Uh, they want to sometimes have the control, but uh, uh, they like to blame somebody about uh, the problem that they can have in, in their services. And, and today, the, this is the reality that we have in, in our market. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> related to Europe, um, the, the total amount of uh, cloud uh, expenditure is 40% compared to uh, the American, North American one. Uh, but the, the, um, the investments in pri private cloud are exactly the same, if not higher, for, the, for Europe. Uh, when it comes to Italy, uh, we are talking about a 19 billion euros market, uh, which is decreasing by 3% 3, 3 last year. Uh, instead, the, the cloud market is growing by a 57%, uh, and it's for a total amount uh, of uh, 620 million euros amount of the total market. When you're talking about uh, cloud in Italy, mostly you talk about YAS and SaaS. Uh, YAS actually is not uh, cloud as a uh, uh, everybody knows it, but is intended as a VPS mostly. We have uh, one of the largest uh, uh, YAS providers in Italy that's, that's uh, advertising his services in, uh, on the TV, so its uh, uh, process of commoditization is almost uh, ongoing. Um, when it comes to SaaS, uh, we are talking about mostly mail, um, mail services, storage services, uh, and uh, disaster recovery. Uh, there's another important point about Europe and then about Italy, uh, that is the um, privacy regulation. I've been to the European Cloud Conference last, last month, and I've uh, attended to a speech by uh, Mrs. Viviane Redding. She is uh, the um, uh, commissioner for human rights and uh, citizenship and she is also the vice president of the eu and um, it it's quite clear that next year by february uh, the data protection which is the um, the, the the law uh, in europe for privacy uh, which uh, is aged uh, from from 1995 is going to be updated by february and uh, some rules will change. Will change mostly for those, those players that are not EU-based. Uh, the rule is simple. If you play on this ground, you play with our rules. Uh, at this moment, um, players like Amazon, uh, Google, uh, or uh, Microsoft uh, can play with their rules. Uh, it's going to change. It's going to change, uh, and um, mm, there's been, there's been a quite interesting debate because uh, the European uh, people talked about uh, the difference of uh, right of citizens for privacy to be let alone, and uh, uh, the, the American uh, or the mm, global operators talked about the rights of the consumers. So there, there's, there's been a lot of debate, there's been a lot of lobbying also. Uh, and in February, I think uh, that the market could open to alternative and local uh, uh, initiatives uh, and uh, offers 
So OpenStack can play quite a role in that. So obviously, um, HP is global, so it's billions and all that. So um, let me like put a different spin on this. So here's the average CIO. They walk in. Uh, this is, by the way, one of the great reasons why I actually think OpenStack is, uh, has a big future. Um, CIO walks in and goes, so here's the problem. All this stealth IT has been spending millions of dollars that I've just figured out on X, Y, and Z cloud. How do I bring this in-house? OK, that's great. So they want to bring it in-house, so like OpenStack. And this comes from across the spectrum right now, so Fortune 100, beyond all that. Everyone is asking the question of how do they bring this stuff in-house. Um, you have local governments, uh, you know, being local to, say, countries, who are also interested in this for IT protection and, you know, all that. Um, I think, what was it? I talked to, ah, you probably won't care. CTO for uh, World Economic Forum, who I had, like, dinner with about a year or so ago, and he was like, yeah, there's no way in hell we put this shit up in anywhere in, like, you know, somebody else's cloud. No way. Um, here's the problem that the local governments and everybody else is going to uh, face. Stealth IT means that they're probably going to pick wherever the cheapest rates they can get, and they're going to push the stuff out everywhere. So anyway, just to kind of push back on the thought, local is going to work to some degree, but you're actually going to end up with a you know, stealth group who's going to say, well, we could do it locally, or we could spend half the money and wait for some regulatory agency to come in and try to hunt us down. Or in some countries, you have people who are, say, activists who don't want it in the local countries who specifically want to put it out there. So I think like when we look at this stuff, like how do we move OpenStack in a way so that you know when we talk about SOC compliant, HIPAA compliant, you name it compliant, how we actually start baking that into the product? Um, because people are gonna, there is gonna be some localization, some requirements localization. Some companies are gonna completely control it. There's a bank in Japan that I've got to visit where like it was great. You go into the bank and they've got this like sliding panel that moves across out of some like you know James Bond film, and they've got a data center that they have like this automated robot forklift that like brings in computers, drops the rack, and when they're finished with the rack, comes in, picks it out, and then squashes it in the backyard because they won't actually want the data. But there is no, like, there is no transport in and out of that. So anyway, I think we have to build it into the cloud because it's going to happen anyway. I like the robot idea, so I want to use that. <laughs> <laughs> so in Japan, the OpenStack is very focused. So we held some uh, OpenStack Japanese as a community event. And uh, more than 1,500 people joining, so growing and uh, communities growing, and many companies start considering to choose uh, OpenStack. So this kind of segues to my next question, which is, you know, for your companies deciding to build a, a cloud, you know, why OpenStack? Why did you pick it? I'm sure you've looked at a lot of other technologies. Maybe you used them or tried them or... Uh, well, I'll go for it. So, uh, <laughs> Brian, I actually uh, came in right after HP had made that decision. Um, so they had actually had something that was built internally that they were looking at, like going forward with. Um, and then someone said, eh, "Bet you ten to one, it would work out better if we actually leveraged something that bigger part of the market would actually do," um, which is obvious, at least to me and probably most of this audience. Um, but. Uh, when you look at it, like if you look at all the different like cloud pieces of software, uh, OpenStack actually is focused on being a stack. Like there's identity as a service, something we don't talk about much, but that's kind of a radical concept. So that's some of the obvious reasons why actually picking it beyond like licensing reasons and all that other stuff. Like it is truly has something that has a lot more of a vision to it than what we really see with the other pieces or the other projects. So. Yeah, that's a simple. It is open and open community. So uh, if you want adding new functions, we can discuss on there. But uh, if this is a product, we should ask, the, please add this functionality on the next release line, then wait to or uh, forever or something like that. So then if it is open stack, we can join the discussions. We can propose the functionalities. That is the biggest reason for us. So the, the ability for you to actually have a direct impact on the roadmap, the features, and basically if, it, if the software doesn't meet your needs, you can get in there and get involved. Yeah, exactly. Versus a traditional software vendor relationship. Yeah. Huh? So prevent some specific vendor locking and open way, and uh, they 
For example, the Quantum uh, or Cinder has plugin architecture, so many vendors are plugin. So it has uh, uh, given me many choices of the product. So something that like um, is very different about a project like OpenStack compared to the other ones, or specifically not having a company that is one single company behind it, there are some advantages. Uh, there's some disadvantages, obviously, but one of the advantages is if we, you're inside of a company, um, and obviously I have some history and knowledge of this part, you always end up with this ongoing debate of like, well, do we create an enterprise version? Do we create a community version? Does this go in the open source version? Does it not? Oh, we just had a leadership change. Somebody else has got this brand finagle like idea that you know we're gonna have to like kill um, over like how do we keep something proprietary? Like that debate is extremely boring and it does not actually help. Um, and something about like having something that's back in the way that OpenStack is, you don't end up with that debate. And that's good. Or if you end up in the debate. It really doesn't matter because it's often some other company. It's not in the core of the environment that that debate's happening in. Because it's not good. It doesn't actually like reflect a good product long term. Yeah, and it, I have experienced that as well. And I think I think it, a lot of times it's a distraction, right? Because it's a constant sort of uh, it's constantly unclear where the line is between you know where the innovation is supposed to go and whether making the open source version better. Is a, is that success or failure? So if you're not sure whether what success looks like, you're going to be you know having a lot of trouble moving quickly. So sorry, go ahead. Well, in our case, why we chose OpenStack is it's more related to a necessity of prices. That that was the the, the, the first, because uh, in SMB market, the all the the, the pricing is, is, is an issue because you need to be very aggressive. Um, and we were trying to find a way to do that with with the normal vendors like Microsoft or VMware, but it was very difficult because the license costs and and the support and the services. Um, for us, it was a risk to try to go to OpenStack uh, at third instance because uh, you can't find people that can manage this or can develop that. Uh, since God, we have a a, a team that. Uh, that is part of the community that helped us in, in, in to do that. Um, and the, the main reason was first, price. The second reason was uh, time to market. Uh, before that, uh, we were trying to do this with, uh, with Microsoft, with Hyper-V, but it was very difficult to, to develop any feature that the, the, the customer demands about uh, orchestration, automation in, in, in SMB. And, and it's expensive also. Then uh, the title market uh, that we can get uh, using OpenStack is, is, is everybody is helping to, to try to, to put it this in, in as a cutting edge technology for uh, cloud services. Um, and that is, is, is helping a lot to, to us to, to have a, a nice feature to offer to the SMB market as uh, the main differentiator. I think this is uh, the couple of things that uh, the reason that we, we, we decide to go with, uh, with OpenStack. And the other is uh, we can use commodity hardware, for example, for the behind. Yes, was very important for us to to try to lower the cost of uh, our hardware. Uh, usually in our company, the the ninety five percent of our customer are almost ent everybody is enterprise, government, financial, uh, with very high cost and and and. And it was a risk because it was to try to change the, the brain of our operators and, and, and our sales guys in order to go and to bid uh, uh, for a new technology in order to, to, to attend the, the, the needs from, from, from the market, uh, and particularly of the, the SMB. Great. Do you have anything to add or should we? Uh, in our case, it's, it's a simple story. In, um, in, February, in February 2010, um, VMware uh, changed the, uh, its policy for the service providers and forced them to, to move to the VSPP program, which is the VMware service provider program. So uh, in order to install the vCloud director and any other uh, vSphere installation, uh, we, we would have charged not uh, by socket, uh, but we would have charged by virtual memory allocated. That would have uh, uh, destroyed any possible income we could have from <laughs> selling a cloud platform uh, based on that uh, 
price uh, of, on, on that price model. So we'd, we'd had to, to, it was a meeting we had uh, with the sales guys in, in Italy and uh, we discovered that there was nothing to do. We could not change this. Uh, huge margins uh, had instantly became, instantly became uh, very, very uh, thin margins. So we had to switch to an open source solution. We, we evaluated the Eucalyptus Open Nebula two years ago. Uh, so there were very, very uh, at an early stage. And then we came to the OpenStack site and uh, we, we are read the documentation, which, is, um, which was at the time very, very uh, complete to understand how uh, the project was, uh, uh, was built, was, was designed, uh, was uh, well ordered. Uh, order was the, the, the thing that I found in this, uh, in this project. So we started working with Cactus. Uh, we w planned to go live with uh, Diablo, but then we switched to Essex as it came out. And so we went in production with, uh, with Essex, and we are running production with Essex now. We have plans to do things with Grizzly um, before summer, uh, but that's it. That's why. So the reason why we chose we have chosen OpenStack then one is economical and it's this. The other one is that we could uh, develop our own product. This is important. Uh, one thing uh, that is very useful to reach uh, reach out for the customer is uh, are the interfaces. If you have interfaces, you let the people use the cloud. They don't want. They don't want to cope with uh, with APIs. They want to use services, and in order to use services, they need interfaces. Uh, we have worked a lot with the uh, partners. Some of them are here. Joe Arnold uh, by SwiftTAC is one of them. Uh, we have worked with the guys at Scalar because we think that providing interfaces is uh, a key to to sell uh, a, cl a cloud product. So, uh, it, so we, we have chosen OpenStack because was, because it was flexible to our needs, and the third reason is uh, philosophical. Uh, it's open source, so we like it. We we want to focus on technology, not on product. We want to focus on our product by using the technology, by knowing the technology. Thank you. So it seems like kind of looking for some common themes here that everyone was. Uh, I guess uh, attracted to the the licensing model that's free and the flexibility and the ability to influence the roadmap and the ability in terms of flexibility to customize and turn it into the specific product that you're you're looking to uh, to bring to market. So um, I've got one more question and then we can open up uh, for for questions if anyone has any um, before we wrap up. So in terms of your specific product offering and your business strategy, you know. Can you say a little bit about your, your offering in terms of you know, what market you're going after, whether it's a, a specific vertical, if you're going after you know, price is the main consideration for the customers you're going after, just a little bit about that uh, approach and how, what kind of customers you're going after. You, you mentioned earlier some of the segments that, that you are addressing, so maybe you just want to uh, expand on that a little bit. Well, yes. We are very happy with the SMB market because it uh, was a night test of the technology. Uh, we are the first service provider doing that. We don't know any, any other in Latin America trying to do that. Um, and the other thing, we, are, we have a connection with our marketplace for SMB that uh, make it easier to the, to the end user to provide machines or, or all this kind of stuff with other products that we are offering today for SMB. We're thinking seriously to go for enterprise, but the thing is, you have to first, you have to know the culture that we have in Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't like to open a ticket for, for anything. They like something face-to-face. -face. You Sometimes when you want to close a deal, you have to invite them to, to have lunch. <laughs> and it's, it's easier to, to, to talk with them when they have a meat in, in their mouth. <laughs> You can convince them that, that, that you, you have a nice company, and they, they bring you the time to do that. It's, but it, it's more uh, associated to human relationships. You need to create the link first in enterprise. Okay? 
And the other thing is they like to define what technology are going to are gonna we are gonna use because there is a very big influence of the other vendors. For example, with Bingware, Cisco, or the other ones, the, the big problem is they they bring you the, the checklist of the technology they want in their cloud. It's difficult to try to change their minds, and, and sometimes you have thousands of parameters of technology that you need to manage. Uh, and, and, and they like to, to have this because they like to say, I have Inware, I have Cisco, I have them. Uh, what we are thinking is probably go to the next step with, with, uh, with OpenStack for the mid-size, for the mid-market is more open to these new technologies and, and they have, they have a, a very high necessity to, for, to, to, to have fast provisioning of their resources like networking, uh, security, uh, uh, virtual machines, uh, all this stuff. Um, but it, we, we need to work hard in order to educate these companies and, and show them how this works. Uh, they don't like to uh, just to buy something because you, you, you put it in your website. They need to see it. They want to touch it. And, and, and sometimes you need to take them to the United States to, <laughs> to, to see the brand then, uh, or, or to invite them, for example, to, to this kind of event in order to make, uh, try to make their, change their minds about this technology. And the other thing is uh, availability. Uh, performance is, is something important, but, but they have uh, more concern about data availability. They don't last to lose any block, and sometimes it's difficult when when you, you try to print a very nice technology like snapshots or, or, or so on in, in order to protect the, the information. Sometimes it's not enough. They don't want to lose any block of data because when you are attending financial and government, a block of data could be I, or I lose some records of the social security and 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 and, and could be a news in the newspaper and and it's it's a very hard way to, to try to provide this, this, this in, in this environment this, this kind of services. But uh, we are confident that in the mid-market we can have a room to, to offer this kind of services and that could be our next step. The thing is we need to prove that uh, our enterprise cloud services based on OpenStack could be uh, guarantee some security in, in data and, 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 and services and performance. And that is going to be the hard part, to try to promote these this services with, with the customer. And the other topic could be orchestration. They don't like to go through a portal to provision by themselves. They want somebody to do this uh, for them. Um, and there is a lot of cost in, in managed services that you need to provide and, and, and you need to find the, the talent, the required talent to do. Uh, by the way, we are hiring. Yeah. If somebody wants to go to Mexico, yeah. Elena, Elena is our <laughs> human resource director. Um, uh, you can talk with her, and, and, and you are going to be uh, next to the Caribbean and the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the Mexican food is really nice, and you are going to like it a lot. It's going to be a nice experience and adventure. Okay, in about two <laughs> weeks from now, you should watch like musical chairs as people move around. <laughs> the real, so the real problem with that. Just well, you know, we're gonna, that, we'll have a little um, graphic like this, a little yeah. animate. And <laughs> yeah, the real problem with this, by the way, is actually like we have to actually train more engineers outside of this pool of engineers yeah, and agree. figure out a way to reach those because otherwise, like just swapping people back and forth, it actually just is going to like chew up more energy. So the real question is, how do we actually get more people involved? Anyway, just my two cents on it. Cool. Go ahead. Um, our main target, since the Italian market is uh, mostly based on VPS offers, was the typical audience for VPS services. So IT professionals, uh, freelancers, uh, startups. Um, we moved from uh, a very um, low skill um, kind of persona to, a, to an even more skilled, and now we are developing services for people who are able to use cloud as it in, in, in its full power. So um, I think that, uh, well, in Italy, 95% of the companies are very small companies. And when I mean very small, uh, I think that uh, an American could not understand 
what very small means uh, mostly 10 15 people okay so very small um, so it's difficult to to sell large infrastructures uh, to this kind of enterprises it's more simple to send the, the single servers okay so um my take on this um there's a bunch of enterprise customers out there um, that we have to actually build like a lot more framework around before they can actually use this stuff. I mean, the concept of like, yeah, just use curl here. That's, there's a lot more that has to be done out there. Um, and there's actually a big, there's a, like a much bigger audience out there who is actually needs a lot more simplification than what we have right now. So, I mean, to me though, like if we look at the market, I, I touched on this in the keystone this morning, uh, the uh, keynote this morning, but like, any part in the beginning of an ecosystem, there's lots of usual random parts and they don't fit very well and like that's usually what happens. And then slowly we see all the baseline stuff all actually just start fitting together and making sense. Um, you know, go back a 10 year plus years ago, you would like look at people who were like selling like build a lamp stack kit. Like hold it, doesn't that stuff just all work together? Like why? And we're seeing that same thing actually happen right now. Um, and I believe within the next year, because OpenStack's moving very, very rapidly, that we'll see all that base stuff solved. There's going to be one path for, you know, happy path for a lot of these pieces. And what we'll see is innovation start occurring more on the outside of the ecosystem. So we'll start seeing that in, you know, PaaS, managed, whatever you want to call it. Um, all of those pieces in a lot less churn in that middle, like in that lower part in the middle, like in even the mid-tier. So anyway. So... Uh Nadi, I'll let you off the hook on this one. Um, if there's any, just to see if there's any questions before we have to end. Um, yes. Uh, there's a mic here, but you can just be loud either way. By the way, so what you're talking about, like cost per unit, especially in the lower end, not when we get into like paths and stuff, um, that is part of operational excellence. So like this is where OpenStack has to be refined enough that you can bring down the cost to where you can do a competition. Because obviously, right, right, like what it's taking us to install OpenStack today, well, obviously Amazon and Google don't quite have those problems at the moment. So to bring down that cost initially, if you want to talk about in the IAS market and so forth, where Really, that whole market, for the most part, is going to become free here at some point anyway, and everything above that's going to be cost. Like this is the part where we have to get into the installer. We have to really make this thing work. So, well, uh, about your question is, uh, is it not the service is not free because it's open source. You you have to pay engineers to to, to take care of this, and and you try to be aggressive, but sometimes it's not enough that uh, no pay licenses. Because you, you have operation, you have cost of collocation, you have cost of uh, communication, for example, in Latin America, you can find cost of $50 per megabit per second. Then it's an special, uh, how can I say, you have to take care of all these costs in order to provide, to productize the, 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 the service in per virtual machine, but it, it's not free. This, you're not uh, uh, bringing the, these machines for nothing. You, you need to has money for this, and um, it's, it's, it's slow, it's aggressive, but it, you need a, a team to, to keep, to take care of this. It's, it's, it's not an easy way to do that. Um, about Amazon and, and, and the others, uh, today in Latin America, uh, the main industry is government. They cannot take the data out of the country. It's part of the, the thing that they need to take care. Uh, because this is a, a big opportunity for Kio, for us, uh, to attend this this market, this industry with solutions like this, um, plus it. Any other questions? Yes.
that that's by the way I think the maturity what he's asking about is like the current complexity and like all the different options um, that's what a little bit of like how many people here were like uh, two or three summits ago like how many people in the room so okay so like it is so different now that the stuff is uh, Diablo took me personally like two days to figure out how to install um, I got Folsom done in a few hours like a lot of the stuff that you see churn in that lower place is just all has to do with like as the market like as the product matures you're going to see a lot of that stuff fall out and value comes off the top not in the the lower level so that complexity um, I'd, I'd like to think that this is ambitious and within a year we're going to see a lot of that just fall out and be one thing I mean it's low-hanging fruit that's also why you see a lot of people doing it um, which also means there'll be a standardized way of doing it here within a very short generation <coughs> So that, that gets solved. Um, so I, I think that we're out of time for the panel, but I could see you really want to ask your question. So ask it real quick, and then we'll wrap. <laughs> So I'll put on a like non-HP hat, or actually, this is actually an HP's best interest anyway. Like so, the answer to that right now, which is a button I push with the foundation, is the foundation has to create a standard set of API tests that test API and functionality response, so that then all of the vendors are actually certified. So like, you shouldn't care if it's HP or insert anybody else, because the API is verified. And this is something that I think the foundation, from what I hear from different board members, um, I'm not the only one who pokes on this. They are going to do this. So that's where the foundation has to create an API suite that everybody passes or doesn't pass, and you know going into it. And that's the only way, I think, to make sure that exactly your concern doesn't happen. And by the way, it's not in HP's best interest for that to actually happen. That's a long discussion, but it is not in our best interest. All right, thank you to all of our panelists and thanks to everybody for coming. <laughs> OpenStack Clouds all around the world.